Hi, Brian here with Embrilliance. Today we're going to begin exploring the controls, buttons, and menus in Stitch Artist Level 1. Let's get started by clicking on the Stitch Artist button, which says Create Designs. When we click this button, it opens the Stitch Artist tool pane. And today we're going to take these buttons that are available on the Stitch Artist tool pane in order. Let's go and add an image to our design. This is an image I used in a previous video. The background image is what we're going to use as a backdrop, and we're going to draw stitches on top of the backdrop. We can click on this image right now because we haven't drawn any stitches. We can take this image and use the green handle and move it around. We can resize it. We can even rotate it. You'll notice that while we're in Stitch Artist mode, the grid lines will appear over top of the image. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see that. When you're not in Stitch Artist mode, the grid lines will be in the background. We can see them a little bit through it right now because we have transparency set on our bitmap. If we click the bitmap properties, you'll see that you can adjust the transparency of the image. We generally will bring in the image with some transparency, which can be useful when, a la when looking at stitches so that we can see what's the bitmap and what are the stitches that we've drawn. Once we start to draw on the design, for instance, let's just make a simple run. Now we'll notice that the bitmap or the background image is locked. If we open up the object tree, you'll see the lock indicator showing that it's locked. We do this so that you don't inadvertently move or size the image when you're trying to select on something such as that line we've drawn. If you want to go back and move the image, you can select it in the tree, and that will let you adjust it. Remember the lock, which is controlled by the lock settings here, is really only available for selection inside the, tr inside the main view. So if I click here, nothing can happen. I can, of course, unlock that, which means that I can come back later and click on it and do things with it. In Stitch Artist mode, we're a little bit different than using the selection mode. We use the green handle in the center to move things versus in the selection mode, which is your normal mode for essentials or any of the other platform titles, you can just grab something and move it. But with Stitch Artist, we decided we wanted to keep the green handle as your sole point of moving something. You'll see the hand icon on there. So that's using a background image in uh, Stitch Artist. Next, we'll take a look at using True Type. The next button, True Type, opens up a window which lets us type in our text. Here I'm just saying hello, and we can pick a font. This will use the True Type fonts on your system. You can convert that to italic or bold if the font supports it. This will bring in the design typically about an inch in size. Because these are just outlines, the size doesn't really matter. We can resize this, rotate it, and do other things with it. What it's done is essentially drawn for us the true type shapes. If you open up your object tree, you'll see that those shapes have been added to a design, and you can select those shapes one at a time or by dragging across, which can be useful for things such as kerning. With this shape, it is editable. editable. So now, if you want to make a specific font or have something look unique for branding, you can adjust those shapes. It's the same as if you drew the shape yourself. We can take the shape and, of course, apply stitches to it, just like any other shape in Stitch Artist. If you're a quilter, you might even want to set them to runs. And that gives you a nice outline font. You have lots of options using TrueType. 
We also have a pair of view options in Stitch Artist. So I'm going to go and get that image again. And I'm going to zoom in on this design here. Now, if we want to put stitches on this, let's just draw something around it. Just using my control key to make some squares, square points. OK, so now we have our shape. And let's say we want to make that a fill. OK, if we want to see the stitches by themselves, we can turn the image off using this button here. See the image toggling? And if we want to turn the stitches off, we can show just the outlines of the objects without the stitches or with the stitches. So these two buttons are used to toggle either the background image with this button or the stitches with this button. In level one, there are two basic drawing modes. The first one we've covered in many videos, and this is draw with points. Where you click, you'll get a node, and that creates an outline. Another way of doing it is with freehand. We click this, we click and hold or drag the mouse. You can let go and start over. And by the way, you can switch modes while you're drawing. Right click to end. Now let's talk about the very simple difference between an open shape and a closed shape. I'm going to draw with points, and I'm going to make part of a square. And I'm going to right click to end that object. Now this end doesn't come back to the start. This is what's called an open shape. If you want to close the shape, you can actually click the close outline button. That gives us a closed shape which means that if I go to edit this node, I'm editing the start and the stop, the entry and the exit of this outline. If I open the shape like this, it will let me move the outlines individually. That's the difference between an open and closed shape. If we bring these outlines close together and then close it, it knows that they're supposed to be moved together. I'm going to take this design and actually open it up in my tree so we can see what it looks like there. And I'm going to select off and reselect. When there are no nodes or points on the outline selected, you'll see that we have the sizing handles. And that lets me resize it. Now the next thing I might like to do is to actually add a hole or a void inside this shape. We can do that when we have a closed outline and the indicator shows that this is a closed outline. And now I have the ability to add a hole. So when I have a selected object that's closed, I can click Add a Hole. And now I will just go through and make some points. Now a hole can't be an open outline, which means that when I draw it and right click, it's going to close the shape for me because a hole can't be open. It's very simple. So that's Add a Hole. Let's talk about how to edit an outline. An outline has points that we can move by dragging them. We can also drag around multiple points and move those. And you'll see on this outline, we have Bezier handles turned on. The Bezier handles allow us to make shapes that can use a minimal number of nodes to define the shape. We do have a tool that lets us switch between Bezier and Spline. If we turn the Spline mode on, this is an automatic form of Bezier. There are no handles when I select the outline, which means if I want to make that same point, I can double click and insert a point. Double clicking inserts or removes a point for either Splines or Bezier's. But sometimes when you want to define the shape and you're not used to the Bezier handles, you can do this very easily by adding a point, 
and adjusting it to get the shape that you want. A way to quickly bring a shape in is to be using an image and then let's look at this design here. Instead of drawing it, we could use our magic wand. The magic wand lets us click on a shape and it outlines the pixels of color automatically. The cleaner the image, the better the result with the magic wand. If we want another object, we can click again in a different area. We right click to end the magic wand tool. Now we have objects that were drawn and we can edit those ourselves if we want to change or adjust the precision of the outline as it goes around the image. When you have Stitch Artist tool pane up, you also have the Create menu exposed. The Create menu gives you some other tools to manipulate outlines. We can open, close, reverse, and connect, as well as combine and separate holes. So let's do a few of those things just so that you've seen it once and you have that example in your mind. We're going to make a shape, right click, and you'll see the green, arrow, green handle and the red handle, which are my beginning and end of this shape. Suppose I apply an applique to this. This is an open shape, but it does have applique stitching. Suppose I wanted the stitching to be on the opposite side of this shape. I can go up to Create, click on Outline, and reverse the points. Because it has its own way of determining which is to the left and which is to the right, and that's a very arbitrary thing, you might find that you want to use this when you're do dealing with complex applique segments that are going to overlap or come into each other or underlap each other. Another feature that's handy is the ability to connect outlines. Suppose I started drawing and I accidentally right clicked. Whoops, I'm not done with that shape yet. I want to continue that shape. That's quite okay. Draw another one and pick up where you left off. Right click on that and select both of the objects, go to Create, and now your outline allows you to connect those outlines. And if you want to, you can adjust that and edit that so that they are smoothly drawn and it looks like you never had that little incident happen. Now what happens if we make a shape And then we make another shape, and we say, oh, these are two separate shapes, and I want those to be a hole within an outline. We can select both of those, go to Create, Outline, and Combine Holes. So now what you see is a single object with a hole. So if I put a fill on it, that's what we'll get. Now, the opposite could be true. Suppose I have this design and I want to separate the hole away from the shape. Go back up here and separate the holes. You'll see in the object tree we now have two objects. So those are some very basic but very powerful tools to adjust outlines in the Create menu. Let's talk briefly about the difference between designs and objects. A design is a collection of objects. Sometimes we want to organize the work that we're doing into multiple designs so that they can be used as a group or as a section that we're going to be able to take from one design page into another. Let's create a new design. Begin new design. And now let's draw an object. Let's make a simple arrow. Okay, so our new design is the arrow. It's entirely possible that you'll want to move objects between designs, and you can do that. You can also set a current design. For instance, which design would I be digitizing in right now? 
Well, we can select this design and go to the Create menu, click Design, and say Set Current Design. That means that as I create new objects, they're created within the design that I chose. You also have another way of selecting where you're going to work, which is by selecting an object and then digitizing, starting with that object selection. What's going to happen in this case is we're going to be digitizing right after what we had selected. So now you have designs and objects under your belt, and we've explored the design menu. Let's talk about entries and exits. When we draw a shape, there's no such thing as an entry or an exit because we haven't applied stitches. If we give it some stitches, we'll see that the stitches run from the start to the stop. We can adjust where the stitches will begin and end manually by dragging the nodes around. Suppose we don't want to do that, and suppose we have two shapes or any number of shapes for that matter. So now we have this run and we have this jump stitch connecting it because the center is going to run around and then jump over to the start of our flower petal. What we can do in this case is select both objects. Here I'm using the control key. Go to create and set auto entry exit. What this will let us do is have the needle come in where we want it to and the design will stitch without jump transitions. There's going to come a time in your digitizing career when you'll either copy and paste or create objects that are of different colors and you want to color them in sequence. One of the simple ways to correct that is to select them all and use your Create menu and Auto Sequence by Color. This will do a manual color sort for you. It's not very intelligent, but it will combine all the colored objects into a series so that it will sew all of one color and then the next. Thanks for following along so far. We're going to explore the Stitch Artist Level 1 stitches in the next segment.